Team on us 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to the Twisted 10, bringing you original and unique host created top 10 lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Twisted 10. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I am one of your hosts. My name is Tack, and sitting to the right of me, as it always is, your boy. No, I'm just kidding. This is Adam. <laughs> I, by Jesus. the way, I hate it when people like in videos and go, "Hey, what's up? It's your boy Tack," or whatever. You're like, I hate that. Well, I was doing a, I was doing a Jay Z. It's your boy. <laughs> I, I wasn't you. doing a. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Jay Alvarez, guys. Uh, living. <laughs> Y'all want to give a shout out to Lil Boosie? Yo, free Boosie. Um, so I give a shout out to Mom, Mom Dukes. Yo, I love you, Moms. Yo, uh, uh, free, free, tiny, tiny, love you, bro. Uh, Don't yo, but yeah, yo, it's your boy. It's your and boy. they always say, Yo, what up, YouTube? This is your boy. Like it's so dumb. I hate that. World star. Oh right, my so. ma. Oh, and Andrea is not here with us tonight. Andrea Joy not no. here to. Andrea took a little bit of a hiatus. So let me get this straight. It was Andrea, her Andrea's, turn. Not, Andrea's not here attacking. You bring some other girl in studio. <laughs> All right. Well, well, no, no. I'm. I must say that the tag is not the one that brought me here. It was Andrea Joy that got me thank here. Thank you. All right. Because it, it was Andrea's turn in rotation to do a top ten list tonight. And by the way, anybody who does not know, if this is your first episode listening to us. Uh, we this is a podcast where we talk about any top ten list. Any okay? There's a different host <laughs> every week. <laughs> Usually it's with us, or we have guests come on, they bring their own list, and it's an original top ten list that we break down, discuss, tear it apart, hack it, whatever, and it can be about anything. Um, and so usually in our rotation between the four of us here on the show, it's Andrea Joy's turn, but supposed she her swore tonight. she's never doing a list again, and apparently she's sticking to it. All right. So, so she brought with her instead, in her replacement, because she's not here. Is what I'm sorry. What was your name? I missed it again. My name is Miss Ginger. It's Miss Ginger. Hi, Miss Ginger. How are you? I am doing fabulous, gentlemen. How are you guys? We're doing good. How come she can say Ginger, but I can't tech? What's going on? Uh, well, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Ginger is my God-given name. She is. She's a God-fearing mm, I woman. I think it's apparently. your parents' given name, I but say, I get it. <laughs> yeah, isn't it the parents' no. given? Not, not not God-given, or does God give it to the parents? Of course. Okay. The Lord speaks to them and blesses us each and every day. <laughs> we really do have a Southern Belle in studio with us today, this don't we? a real no shit Southern Belle. Excuse my language, ma'am. I do apologize. Well, you live I, on a plantation? Oh, of course I do in Georgia. <laughs> we have got the best Georgia peaches you have ever seen. Wow. Just plump and right for the picking. Are you still talking about the peaches or the people know, that you want? I'm getting horny over here, Tack. Uh, well, well, sounds this, like she's hitting on this us. This brings me to this top ten I had to bring. I wanted to share with you guys. The yeah, what did you bring us this week? Top ten recipes I do with peaches on the plantation. Oh, oh boy. Oh, shit. Uh, but, the- but, but Andrew Joy told me that that wasn't appropriate for your show. All right. Good girl, Which Andrea. Is, uh, that brings me another thing about the show is when the host comes with a show or a topic... Uh, we don't know what it is, so it's always a surprise with us. So what have you brought with us today, Ginger? Well, I have decided Almost. that the top ten strangest roadside attractions in the United States oh. of America. Oh, God damn it. That was my next one. Was really? it really? It really was. was <laughs> no like a, shit. It was, was like a Route 66. Oh, kind of damn. She beat me to it. Now, All how right. funny is that? How many shows does Andrew Joy have where someone said that was their next one? <laughs> God. I just got to say. Yeah. I mean, she did tell me. Oh well, that's good. Okay, so all right, <laughs> top ten twisted roadside attractions. Which I have a story, but I'm not going to share. I will later because I don't want to, you know, say something that may be on Ginger's list. So well, we'll see here. So are you guys is ready the to SS start? Minnow any of these attractions, Ginger? No minnows. <laughs> okay. No minnows. Three hour to. I'm a southern girl. I like big things. <laughs> Everything's bigger Minnow in Texas. Is SS, too Min- small. SS Minnow was an impressive ship. It was tossed around by the waves and 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. The top 10 strangest roadside tourist attractions in the USA. And number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Goes to Unclaimed Baggage Center in Scottsboro, Alabama. Wait a minute. There's a place where unclaimed baggage actually goes? <laughs> where? Yes, and apparently it is a great place to go with you and yours and your whole family. It's where so, Samsonite goes to, <laughs> goes to die. So <laughs> instead of shipping these bags to the proper location, they ship them to... Where is this? No, at? no, no. They wait the proper allotted amount of time oh, okay. and spend a lot of time and money to get these bags and backpacks back to their owners. But yeah, oh, here, here gotcha. let me let me tell you a little let's, about it. Let's hear about it. If you've ever lost if you've ever lost a piece of luggage on a plane, train or bus, odds are that six months later it ended up in Scottsboro, Alabama, with a price tag at the unclaimed baggage center. While only a tiny fraction technically gets lost and a lot of money and time is spent to reunite it with its owner, they still end up with countless bags every year. It's not a colossal baggage carousel carrying a continuous stream of suitcases and backpacks sold unseen to daredevil buyers. That's what I'm picturing. But <laughs> instead... I'm in the middle of a desert... It looks like a department store, complete with a floor plan to direct you to familiar shopping ser- selections. So they go through their people's shit and sell them in that or store? Or are you buying well, like oh, unopened bags? Yeah. It's kind of like... Uh, You've got no. your electronics, your books, oh, wow. your clothes all on shelves and racks. And yeah, I, know a lot of, I know a lot of airports actually auction off. At the end of, the, at the end of every year, they take their loss of and they auction it off. Wow. Uh, I know, uh, Miami International Airport does that, and that's what they use. I mean, they just, it's like fundraising for the airport, basically. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. It, it didn't say where to go, but, um, it's visited by a million shoppers, ev- by a million shoppers every year, and only once in 40 years has someone purchased one of their lost items, a pair of ski boots. What? What? Only like once only in 40 one years? Once a year in 40 plus so what, years. So what are people going there? Wait, for? I'd go in there and buy all sorts of shit. After they've had it so many days, then they give it to these people, and then they just sell it. Oh, well, okay. I see what they you're saying. They put a price tag on each and every item. They display uh. it, make it look beautiful. And these are great items, I must say, because these aren't things people are giving away. These are lost items. So these are the treasures that are lost that you must go and buy in Alabama. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard the George Carlin bit about all your shit? Like all your possessions? Mm-hmm. All, all your-, your shit is stuff, but other people's stuff is shit. Uh, One man's yeah, but no, no, no. When his his this bit, this is a long time ago. That that bit was where he starts with all your stuff is in your house, all your shit is in your house. When you go on a trip, you just take a smaller version of all of your shit, and then if while you're on a trip, you walk to the grocery store, you take a smaller conglomerate of that shit, shit. and that's really important shit because it made it that far. Yeah, it's a funny bit. All right, yeah, I, think, I think it's the same bit I was talking about. He's, he ends with, and have you ever, by the way, have you ever noticed that all your shit is stuff and other, other people's stuff is shit? It's shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. All right, Ginger. We're sorry. We, we tangent oh, no. in this studio quite often, so please forgive us. That is fine. Gentlemen must talk and a lady must sit and let them talk. Wow. I like that. Holy wow, shit. Wow, that's oh, very old fashioned. I, I want no part of that. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, when you guys are ready, I will continue. All right. We're go ready. Ahead. Go ahead. All right. Number, number nine is number shoe nine. trees. Number nine. Shoe trees? Yes. There are, there are a bunch of shoe trees all around. Must say, so this one's a little difficult. So I picked this one in particular. It's one of the first ones. This one is on Highway 50 near Middle Gate, Nevada. A lone cottonwood stood clotted with hundreds of shoes. One tipster told us the first pair was thrown during a wedding night argument by a young couple. Later, their children's shoes were added to the bow. Whatever its origins, the tree seemed to suck up all the discarded footwear in the county. Sadly, the tree was cut down by vandals on New Year's Eve 2010 and 2011. So people are just throwing shoelaces that are tied, like shoes with shoelaces that are tied together up into the trees? Oh, That's- uh, yes, and this tree was full of them for years and years. Oh, okay. So this was even on the news I brought. See where I come from. That's what gang members throw up on power lines so you know what gang ran that <laughs> <Yeah>. block. <laughs> <laughs> But this one was better because this one went into about the tree. 
says, here we go. Let me find it. With a Reebok pi- game. I just picture a kite eating tree and some like bald kid getting really aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's when they were trying to figure out who caught cut down this shoe tree along fifth, Highway 50 east of Fallen. The decades-old cottonwood tree is located about 50 miles east of Fallen, just beyond Old oh. Pony Express stop at Middle Gate Station. Hold on. The tree fell next to a town called Fallen? <laughs> no, no, it was vandalized and cut. Oh, I see what you're saying. It did fall, but it was cut down. So it didn't no. just fall down. This no. is murder. <laughs> A tree murder. Anyway. Fur is murder. Leaves are murder. All right. The part that was interesting about this is the Nevada Tourism on Commission says the tradition started following an argument between newlyweds during which one tossed the other shoes in the tree. When they reconciled, the other reper. Reconciled. reconciled. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We be reconciled. The other reciprocated, and people that threw- one you got. <laughs> <laughs> and people threw trees into. <laughs> people threw trees into shoes. Oh, little little bitty trees. <laughs> It's the shoe trees, you know, like the shoe horns. <laughs> yeah, when they I'm reconciled, the other reciprocated, and people threw shoes into the tree ever since. And they decided to have a memorial for this tree on February 13th at 2.30 p.m. When this happened in 2011, when it got cut down. This was a very special tree. Sounds like it. So it wasn't just shoes thrown up there. When people threw them up there, it was symbolization so wait, wait. of Coming together. So wait, were you reading the eulogy for the tree? Is that what was <laughs> yes, that, that yes, might have been? Yes, yeah, that was the eulogy. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> murder, murder, death murder. by murder. It was lovely. Which is story. a movie I heard of earlier today. Number eight. <laughs> Number eight. eight. The thing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's You're the one I was going to tell the story about. Yes. Okay. I can. I've been there. Like. When I was well, on my way, no, don't, not don't establish I'm not, thunder. I'm not going to say it. Don't establish yourself as the alpha ginger. You let her have this. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to say what it is or what anything. What a true gentleman you are, my but, knight uh, in shining armor coming to my rescue of this vandal no, who must no, have been no. born in the fields. I'm not going to give away anything what it is, but I was driving from here to Vegas and back. And uh, so... We keep, there's like a billion billboards for this thing. That's, that's all a, part of the story. Oh, okay. Let her tell. Let her tell the story first. I'm, I wasn't gonna say. It. All right. Let, oh. let her tell it, and then you can give your personal take. Wait, <laughs> Stop trying to steal her thunder. Thing is, <laughs> huh? it. The thing in Dragoon, Arizona. Mystery of the desert reads on a billboard. Seeing is believing. Explains another. Driving on Interstate 10 between El Paso, Texas, mm-hmm. and Phoenix, you'll spot 247 of these signs within yes. a 200-mile span of highway. They're designed with the look of an early 50s horror comic, a look that tends to stick out against the flat brown terrain surrounding them. Mm-hmm. And for more than 50 years... This good marketing strategy has worked. It leaves the travelers brain muddled and unsatisfied with only one thing to restore their minds back, going to see about the thing. Bullen began its operations more than a 100 years ago in New Mexico, 1912, by trading with local Native Americans. It was officially incorporated in 1953 after decades of expansion. It was this move that brought the company in touch with Thomas Prince, who purchased a creepy exhibit from a traveling roadside show, which had become the keystone of the strange museum that he had named The Thing. Who had purchased a creepy exhibit from a traveling so- roads? <laughs> I don't see anything. Okay, who had purchased a creepy exhibit from a traveling roadside? <laughs> Take four. <laughs> it's hard to do. And I'm going to try to make up words and not read them because it doesn't make sense on this. I always have trouble right. reading. That's why I put bullet points. Who had purchased... Wait. It was this move that brought brought the company. It doesn't make sense. It was at this point... No. It was this thing he bought. This <laughs> creepy exhibit. And it started the whole thing. 
And that is what the thing is. I don't, I don't know what the thing is, though. Okay, so... Well, you've got to go. First of all, <laughs> I'm not going to do point. spoilers, at least not yet. Maybe at the end of the episode, I'll spoil it. All but, right. That's why but, I didn't um, put it in here. It's because I didn't right. want people to know. They do you know what it is? see the thing. Do you know oh, what it is? I saw pictures. You oh, can okay. look it up on the so, internet. So I was driving from here to Las Vegas and back. And all along I-10, you see these hundreds of billboards. I'm, and finally, you're like your curiosity just gets to you. You're like... We have to figure out what this thing is. Like, uh, I mean, it was marketing done amazingly well, and it works. And so, of course, we had to go. We're like, well, there it is, you know, because it counts down your miles to it. And now it's like, right here, go see the thing. So we did, and we went in, and it's like just walk through. I, I can't remember if it cost anything or not. Um, I'm sure it would well, have. Yeah. If you well, remember it being really cheap, two hundred and forty-seven signs yeah, and two hundred miles, you're getting more than a sign a mile. That's true. So I, I don't think it was very much. It might have been like a buck or something like that. But um, I feel like so that, I went and I, I saw the thing. I feel like that's the original clickbait. Yeah, like, oh, like, good call. Like that, that, yeah. All that, like all those road signs, because I've seen no. a ton in my life oh, too. It's a trap in Florida. They have all like anywhere you go on I ninety five or I seventy five. Come see the biggest skater this side of Florida, and you get there, and it's like this is, f- this is fucking. Yeah. I see, but I, I think this on the golf course. I think yeah. you're right. However, I think with that many signs, it's more of a pop up ad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And well, this is, pop, this up, is, uh, pop up ads are clickbait now. That's, yeah, that's it's right. just evolved. This is pre like uh, YouTube, so like you know, people probably filmed it and like now you can't now you can probably find. It's videos been there of since on. the fifties, so it's it's yeah. become iconic. It's probably not as busy now as it used to. That's be. That's why I didn't want to tell anyone what it was. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I've driven that route between toilet. El Paso and Tucson a lot on I-10, and I don't remember seeing a single sign for that. I'm also. Not paying attention, so. <laughs> could. But yeah, she's right. Like the signs were like old 1950s style, like horror movies, and it was like you know, like the werewolf, you know, or Frankenstein's monster, and you know, that's how it looked, and like it's amazing, it would be stretched across, or you know, you it's had really cool. To go. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. had to see what the thing was. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. What is it? Dun dun dun! Great advertising. Maybe we'll tell at the one, end of the one, episode. One of the big twisted things is that it's a tourist trap. They get you in there with that great advertising. Gotcha. But it's not. Good. It doesn't completely let you down. Oh dear. A little bit, but not as much as you would think. So it's not like. It's not like oh, check out this car, you know, or whatever. You know, it's <laughs> not like a. It is something interesting, but. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's, okay. it's okay. It's not a monster truck. The thing. <laughs> oh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Grave digger. Yeah. Number seven is Mammy's cupboard. Seven. Number siete. Oh, oh, number seven. Ollie. This is in Natchez. Natchez. Machete. Oh. Mississippi, <laughs> along Highway 61. Mammy's cupboard, a roadside restaurant, is a giant Aunt Jemima has sprawled countless debates over its cultural and social merits, but no one argues over what she was meant to do, getting travelers to pull, up, pull off off the highway. Mammy was built by Henry Godet in 1939 to 1940. He had a gas station and wanted a roadhouse that would capitalize on the then-current craze, Gone with the Wind. Roadhouse. One till is that Mammy was designed as a white southern belle, her shape does seem more Scarlett O'Hare than Hattie McDaniel. <laughs> Henry then transformed the big lady to black from white because black was better than white. In the road food visual shorthand of 1940, conveying ideas of nurturing and nourishment. Such an interesting place for a luncheonette inside a 28-foot tall black woman's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> that took a twist at the end. Oh, that's like a, there's a, there's a hotel in South Beach called the Delano. And if you walk into the lobby, it's designed to look like what's under your parents' table. Like the chairs look like jacks, like when you, you know, oh, really? Ball and pick up jacks. And they even have huh. the columns look like table legs. Like the columns. That's look, cool. Columns. That's so it looks cool. like you're underneath so, the table. So the whole, yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's like he, it was, you're supposed to feel like you're a little kid playing under the, under the table. That's pretty cool. So, hmm. so that's pretty cool. That that's also a concept of the restaurant. It's like like, oh, Mama. I'm, <laughs> I'm in Aunt Jemima's skirt. I think Aunt Jemima is at the racial sensitive area now. Well, we've uh, we've de- we've determined at uh, at my workplace that uh, Cholula, the the lady, yeah, the Cholula, great Cholula. Bob, she is the Aunt Jemima of the Latin American community. <laughs> we have, we have Betty Crocker. 
<laughs> so, I don't know. We have Betty White. White guys win. I'm just saying. We have Betty White. Uh-huh. I'm not going to lie. My bucket list for, for boning, because that's a word we use, uh, is still between Betty White Maggie and Smith. Maggie Smith. <laughs> and Maggie Smith? Yeah, because you got to you got to get the other side of the pond. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Are right, you guys ready for the next one? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we this are. This is Ginger. number six. Numero six. six. Octavia Hatchard buried alive in Pikesville, Kentucky. Octavia was twenty years old when she gave birth to her first child, Jacob, in early eighteen ninety one. Jacob died almost immediately. Octavia sank into depression and then a coma. She died during a hot spell, May 2nd, 1891, and was quickly buried. And then it was noticed that other people in Pikesville were falling into swoons, but not dying. The mass swooning may have been caused by a mosquito-borne encephalitis or gas escaping from a coal mine. (laughs) Wondering if she had been buried alive, they went to dig her up. Her fingernails were Fingernails were all bloody. The lining of the coffin was shredded, and her face was contorted. Oh, my she God. She had been buried alive. Wow. Octavia was the daughter of Pike Count's elite, one of Pike County's elite families. Her husband, James, owned thousands of acres, making his fortune in timber and coal. While the story made for juicy gossip, Actually, reporting it could have been seen as bad business decision for anyone involved. So a year later, after her death, James had a life-size marble statue of his wife built atop a hilltop grave. So you're going to visit the statue? Yes. <laughs> and later he built the Pike Hotel in a spot where her statue would always gaze and watch over him. Later, making a hotel with a museum of local artifacts, including the photograph of Octavia's statue, as well as his own custom-built coffin, designed to prevent him from being buried alive. He Mm. never married and outlived Octavia by nearly 50 years. There is a story that when he died, a string was tied about his finger Mm. and run up above the ground, a bell at the end of it, so that if he was buried alive, someone would hear the bell. Wow. This haunted site <laughs> and the story behind it make for an interesting tourist set. Wow. I think when I get buried, I want to have one of those little strings coming out of it with a little bell on the end of it, too. I think I'll just be cremated, and that way I'll save. Oh. Yeah. I hate to be burned alive, though, so maybe I put a bell in there for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> All right, that was the top five, guys. So we'll take a little break, and then we'll continue with the last five of our All right, strangest roadside tourist attractions in the United States of America. Sounds good. Cool. I'm excited. We got to get like a teaser for the next five. There will be five of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll Perfect. take a little break, and we'll be back. Hey, it's Adam. If you enjoy the hosts or the content of The Twisted Ten, be sure to check out our other show. It's called Living Podcariously. While The Twisted Ten may get crass and explicit occasionally, it holds no water to Living Podcariously. We do get a little bit more rough and raw on that show. We have a lot of fun producing it and have had some awesome guests. And as always, thanks for listening. Back with our top 10 strangest roadside tourist attractions in the United States of America. Makes me want to go on a road trip, Tech. Yeah, man. I'm saying. Our first ones were number 10, the unclaimed baggage center Mm -hmm. in Alabama, the shoe tree in Nevada, the thing in Arizona. What is the thing? Mammy's cupboard in Mississippi, and Octavia's statue in Kentucky. All right. Which brings us to number five. Number five. Little single. Which is a mystery spot in Santa Cruz, California. Mystery spot? Huh. Mystery spot is a gravitational anomaly located in the Redwood Forest just outside of Santa Cruz, California. It is a circular area of F 
of effect around 150 or 46 meters in diameter. Within the mystery spot, you will be stunned as your perceptions of the laws of physics and gravity are questioned. But don't mm. take our word for it. Come and decide for yourself. The mystery spot was discovered in 1939 by a group of surveyors and opened to the public in 1940. The mystery spot has amazed and perplexed hundreds of thousands of visitors from all over the world, and men return time and time again to experience these puzzling variations of gravity. Interesting. That's, Did we is have that one really of those a- here? Yeah, we have we have one in Florida. I was just looking at that's a well, no, no shit. I, like I meant like in this room from earlier, <laughs> <laughs> earlier inside joke. But. Um, that's no shit. Like an area where certain things weigh less or whatever. What? How does that work? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking of something else. Like if you had a rolling pin and you put it on one side of the floor, it would just roll to the other side. Really. Does it look like it looks like it's yeah, all level? Yeah, it's because of the way low. the horizon is set. It looks like you're lo- it looks like you're looking uphill. It's like, but uh, in, in actuality, place. you're actually looking downhill. It's just because of how it's set. Right, that's uh, like that place okay. where they say the ghost kids move this car that yeah. it appears to roll uphill, but it's not. They actually did surveying of the land, and it actually is downhill, but it appears uphill. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, we'll have to go to that. I mean, uh, I'll have to tell Andrea we have to go to that. <laughs> Well, I yeah, it's in uh, yeah, Spooky Hill. It's uh, Lake Wales on Highway 27 in Florida. It's between Orlando and Tampa. Sweet. Yeah. All right. All right. Number four. The Number world's four. largest oh. chest of drawers in High Point, North Carolina. <laughs> the home furnishing capital of the world is crowded with furniture manufacturing operations, pier wall bargain hunters, and even a furniture discovery center. The original chest of drawers was built in the 1920s by High Point Chamber of Commerce. The 20-foot-tall building with knobs served as the local Bureau of Information. Ah, See what they did there? (laughs) Because it's full of knobs. In 1996, (laughs) the building was completely renovated into a 38-foot-tall a God darned transcend block front chest. Ah. (laughs) A real chest was used as a prototype. Two gigantic socks dangle from a drawer, officially symbolizing the city's hosiery industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. I didn't think it was going to be that big. I thought it was going to be like, it's 20 feet tall or something. But no, it's a damn building. Yeah. It completely looks like a big chest of drawers. Is there a picture? It's right there. The best it's part. Right of, there in the city. This big old. The best part about that is that the Chamber of Commerce was sitting in a meeting somewhere and they said, how can we possibly get more people to come to our little town to draw commerce in? Let's build a big chest of drawers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, hey, cool. Not to be outdone by Ikea. What did Ikea do? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know. It's oh, okay. Just, uh, I just laugh if it's a, like an Ikea chest. <laughs> like It wasn't construction workers. It's just a bunch of guys trying to read Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found a picture of it. It's... uh. It's this right here. Oh, that is pretty big. Yeah, pretty yeah cool. I, feel, I feel like that would take a while to assemble. No kidding. And like all IKEA, no tools were used, so it's a <laughs> death trap. Yep. <laughs> all right, number three is oh, oh, number three. 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 the beer can house, a Houston landmark. This is landmark. my kind of place, beer can. Oh yeah. John Milkovich, a retired upholsterer from the Southern Pacific Railroad, started his project now known as the Beer Can House, in 1968. John Malkovich? Should have gone out. I caught that too. (laughs) Like the actor? There he began laying thousands of marbles, rocks, and metal pieces into concrete and redwood to form a unique landscaping feature. When the entire front and backyard were completely covered because he got sick of mowing the grass, he turned to the house itself and began adding aluminum siding. Aluminum be- beer can siding, that is. Oh, jeez. Over the next 18 years, the house disappeared under a cover of flattened beer cans for both practical and decorative reasons. Oh, man. Garlands made out of cut beer cans hanging from the roof edges not only made the house sing in the wind, but also lowered <laughs> the family's energy bills. Ripley's Believe It or Not estimated that over 50,000 cans adorned this monument to recycling. John considered his work an enjoyable pastime rather than a work of art, but he did enjoy people's reaction to his creations. He said, 
It tickles me to watch people screech to a halt. <laughs> they get embarrassed. Nice. Sometimes they drive from their block a couple of times. Later, they come back with a car load of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much recycling it is is repurposing. So. Yeah. So these are all the beers he drank. It, it didn't specify, but I would I would think so over that. Movie. Uh, hopefully, he charges admission to see it and gives a donation to the uh, American Liver Society. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> he also holds AA meetings there as well. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Inside a beer house. And number two. Number two. This is from our good friend Andrew Joy's home state, Oklahoma. Oh, wow. Oklahoma. The cow chip throwing capital of the world. Oh, boy. In Beaver, Oklahoma. <laughs> Beaver, <laughs> Oklahoma. Beaver. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, oh, and the town of Beaver should be proud of its undisputed title, cow chip throwing capital of the world. It is here that the World Championship <gasps> Cow Chip Cow Throw chips. is held each April. Ooh, yes. that's gross. Now, yes. King Cow Chip, a leering cartoon of a dried fecal wad wearing a tilted crown, is the town's that's registered wait, trademark. <laughs> wait, is this Mr. Hanky's dad? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but he's round. This bride in the sun king has oh, brought gross. notary and prosperity to Beaver. <laughs> what All right, hold on. I, I think we got enough of this. Hold on. So let's let's. So, so there's a town named Beaver, which let's admit Gillette is probably very popular there, <laughs> um, and they worship the cow chip god, which is a dried up piece of. Cow, cow pie. Cow dung. Yeah, yeah. Cow shit. Let's so this just goes to show you that anything in Oklahoma is entertaining. <laughs> but, but, okay, okay, this is, this is true though. The, the King Cow Chips Royal Entourage keeps the claim alive, cranking out commemorative gift boxes of cow chips, entertaining uh. foreign dignitaries, and dragging the beaver trailer around town <laughs> That's God just hard damn. to say. This is foreign nationals are coming. I'm never this. going to complain about being from Claxton, Georgia again. <laughs> I would never once complain about my mom's family again. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, well, when the when the uh, team from Roadside America went in 1994, Randall Campbell, then mayor of Beaver, was <laughs> obligated to greet them with open arms. Not to mention some gift box cow chips. He assured us that he had only tossed a chip once before, yet his m- mean curve pitch at the Sony Handy. I don't know. Sony did not sponsor this. There's no way. <laughs> at our Sony no, I don't Handy believe it. <laughs> betrayed a suspiciously, a suspiciously practiced skill. Oh, yet his mean curve pitch at our Sony Handy Cam betrayed a suspiciously, suspiciously practiced skill. He tossed underhand a frisbee flick, pounding off the bumper of a car on the opposite side of the wide paved main street. I think that's my mother-in-law's car, he said. In 2015, the old world record cow chip toss was shattered by novice Drew Russell, who entered the contest on a whim and hurled his chip 188 feet and six inches into his mother's car. Jesus Christ. So we celebrate so, by throwing pieces of cow crap into our mother's vehicle. Yep. And the mayor of Beaver gives away commemorative cow shit. <laughs> mayor of R- Beaver, by the way, named Rand- Randall Campbell. Yeah, I was going to say, yes. Handy, Randy, Randy <laughs> something. How yeah. are you not a politician with that kind of a name? <laughs> like you, that's, Your slogan's right itself. <laughs> Come it's to Beaver. Beaver. Rand- it's Rand- Beaver, Oklahoma. That's just how things Come work Come to Beaver, Beaver, and we'll give you a commemorative cow shit from Randall Campbell. <laughs> Can you imagine just saying, I'm from Beaver, Oklahoma? Who am I going to vote for for me? Well, I guess I'll take a game. Who will vote for Randall Campbell? Wait, do you think they were red or blue? Just saying. Uh, <laughs> what, that, co- that, what color is a Beaver? blue all day. They don't, know what co- they don't even know what blue looks like. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> all right. I apologize to all of our Beaver listeners because we love <laughs> all of our Listeners. I love Beaver. Beaver okay. I, love I love Beaver, I, too. I've always been a fan of Beaver. <laughs> yeah. Beaver's great. Beaver's really, really good at... Shave school. Beaver clean. Three <laughs> three months good. or three weeks out of the month, great place to visit. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, our number one strangest roadside tourist attraction in the number United States one. of America. Numero uno. One. 
The Cockroach Hall of Fame in Plato, Texas. Oh, oh my, God. my God. I can't Ugh. wait. Let's hear it. It's basically a collection of decorated little scenes with dressed up dead roaches. <laughs> it's diorama <laughs> with roaches. The with roaches. exhibit shows about oh, no. 25 insects and costumes like tutu or formal dresses. <laughs> the roach figures of celebrities and notable people never stop amusing the museum's visitors. There is a Marilyn Monroach, a David <laughs> oh, God. Letter Roach, a Ross Perroach, and a Liberoche. It, it would be Texas with a Ross Perroach. <laughs> and the Cockroach Hall of Fame has its own Roach Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Those brave enough to touch real living roaches will be introduced by Michael Bowden to the living exhibits of his collection, The Largest in Texas, which features the hissing Madagascar cockro- cockroaches. When they die, they become decorations for their owner's hat. For those surprised by this, Michael Bowden answers, If Australia can have crocodile dandy, why can't the USA have cockroach dandy? Oh my god! Oh my god! Ross Perroach sounds like a roach clip. That like it sounds like a totally different type of roach. It's, have you ever watched Half Baked? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wesley t- Pipes. Wesley Pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Ross Perroach sounds like the little clip they use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Was it Billy Bong Thornton? <laughs> Billy Bong Thornton, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh so, my god! Wow. So it's roaches dressed up and posed in dioramas. Oh, yes, yes. Which most people Seems in Texas probably don't know what a diorama scenes. is. But. Even for schmucks, wasn't that whole, wasn't his whole thing, like his little hobby in that? All about him doing the little rats in yeah, those yeah, scenes? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what a great movie. That That's just a work of art. Well, wow. Well, Ginger, we appreciate you bringing that list to us. Yeah, and thank you. Makes us all want to do a road trip, so I'm thinking. I think we should trip? We should visit all these and, and take pictures and, and post these on our Facebooks. Well, if I post them with you on Facebook, Andrew might get a little jealous, just saying. I don't think she would. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, uh-oh. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I don't want to do any spoilers for the thing. I don't know. If yeah, you want. what is? Come on. No, how about it? I, I think what that's is the something thing? you need to know. That it's a, it's a two, hand that runs freely. Two hundred and forty-seven miles <laughs> that you've got to go on to see this. All right, I guess I'll just in this podcast and not ever know the answer to the thing. <laughs> the thing's got a tall buddy named Lurch. You ran. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on that note. We will end today's episode. Who's, Ginger, thank you so much. Who's next? Who's next? Who is next? I think it's is it me. I believe. Oh, I think it's you, buddy. I think it is me. I yeah. It's oh. oh, I don't Not have it. it. Not <laughs> it. Yep. Tax all you, buddy. All right. uh, so next week I will bring the top ten list to us all. And uh, Ginger, thank you so much for coming out and bringing that to us. Um, hopefully, uh, Andrew will be back next week. Oh, you are welcome. You guys just enjoy that peach cobbler I brought you. <laughs> I do, and thank you. Uh, so, if you want to get a hold of us, you can email us, or if you have an idea for a show or want to be on the show, email us at thetwisted10 at gmail.com. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash thetwisted10. You know, maybe more importantly, if you like the show or, you know, the hosts or the style or whatever, share it with somebody. This is a pretty unique podcast we've got here. So uh, shoot an email, tell a friend, do whatever, send them to our Facebook page as well. And that's we're, we're homegrown. Um, we're a grassroots kind of podcast. So we uh, we get marketed by our listeners. So be sure to share it out. And you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, Jay, you know the Twitter handle? I don't. It's super easy. At the Twisted at 10. The twisted at 10. the Twisted yeah, 10. Yeah, that one's, that one's an easy at one. At the Twisted 10. I, I, I was told there would not be a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> no, find uh, us on Twitter, at the Twisted 10, guys. It's uh, it's fun. It's always fun times. We we don't use it, but we've heard great things. Indeed. <laughs> find me on days. Twitter at jaythefunny1. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, follow the Twisted 10. Sweet. Cool. All, All right. right. So are you ready to get out of here? Yeah, let's get out of here. All right. So for the Twisted 10, my name is Tack. I'm Adam. I'm Jay Alvarez. And I'm not Andrea Joy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Ginger, and uh, we will see you guys next week. T minus 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five. All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and lift off. Five, ten, three, four. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique host created top 10 lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Twisted Ten. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I am one of your hosts. My name is Tack, and sitting to the right of me, as it always is, you boy. No, I'm just kidding. This is Adam. <laughs> I, by the way, I hate it when people like in videos they go, "Hey, what's up? It's your boy Tack," or whatever. You're like, I hate that. Well, I was doing a, I was doing a Jay Z. It's your boy. <laughs> I, gotcha. I wasn't doing a. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Jay Alvarez, guys. Uh, living. <laughs> Yo, I want to give a shout out to Lil Boosie. Yo, free Boosie. Um, so I give a shout out to Mom, Mom Dukes, yo, I love you, Moms, yo, uh, uh, free, free, tiny, tiny, love you, bro. Uh, <laughs> Don't yo, but yeah, yo, it's your boy. It's your and boy. they always say, yo, what up, YouTube? This is your boy. Like it's so dumb. I hate that. World star. <laughs> oh right, my sorry. ma. Oh, and Andrea is not here with us tonight. Andrea Joy not no. here to. Andrea took a little bit of a hiatus. So let me get this straight. It was Andrea, her Andrea's, turn. Not, Andrea's not here, Tack, and you bring some other girl in studio. <laughs> All right. Well, well, no, no. I'm. I must say that the tag is not the one that brought me here. It was Andrea Joy that got me thank here. Thank you. All right. Because it, it was Andrea's turn in rotation to do a top ten list tonight. And by the way, anybody who does not know, if this is your first episode listening to us. Uh, we given or does God give it to the parents? Of course, okay. the Lord speaks to them and blesses us each and every day. <laughs> we really do have a Southern Belle in studio with us today, this don't is we? A real Tag? no shit Southern Belle. Excuse my language, ma'am. I do apologize. Well, you live I, on a plantation? Oh, of course I do in Georgia. <laughs> we have got the best Georgia peaches you have ever seen. Wow. Just plump and ripe for the picking. Oh, you're still talking about the peaches or the people know, that you want? I'm getting horny over here, Tack. Uh, well, well, sounds this, like she's hitting on us. This brings me to this top ten I had to bring. I wanted to share with you guys. The yeah, top, what did you bring us this week? Top ten recipes I do with peaches on the plantation. Oh, and, oh boy. Oh, shit. Uh, but, the, but, but Andrew Joy told me that that wasn't appropriate for your show. All right. Good girl, Which Andrea. Is, uh, that brings up another thing about the show is when the host comes with a show or a topic... Uh, we don't know what it is, so it's always a surprise with us. So what have you brought with us today, Ginger? Well, I have decided Thanks. that the top ten strangest roadside attractions in the United States oh. of America. Oh, God damn it. That was my next one. Was really? it really? It really was. was <laughs> no like a, shit. It was, was like a Route 66. Oh, kind of damn. She beat me to it. Now, All how right. funny is that? How many shows does Andrew Joy have where someone said that was their next one? <laughs> God. I just got to say. Yeah. I mean, she did tell me. Oh well, that's good. Okay, so all right, top ten <laughs> twisted roadside attractions. Which I have a story, but I'm not going to share. I will later because I don't want to, you know, say something that may be on Ginger's list. So well, we'll see here. So are you guys is ready the to SS start? Minnow any of these attractions, Ginger? No minnows. <laughs> okay. No minnows. Three hour to. I'm a southern girl. I like big things. <laughs> Everything's bigger Minnow than Texas. Is too SS, small. Min- SS Minnow was an impressive ship. It was tossed around by the waves. And <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. The top ten. This is a podcast where we talk about any top ten list. Any okay? There's a different host <laughs> every week. Usually, it's with us, or we have guests come on. They bring their own list, and it's an original top ten list that we break down, discuss, tear it apart, hack it, whatever. And it can be about anything. Um, and so, usually, in our rotation between the four of us here on the show, it's Andrea Joy's turn but supposed to be she or she's never doing a list again and apparently she's sticking to it all right so so she brought with her instead in her, her replacement because she's not here is what well, i'm sorry what was your name i missed it again my name is miss ginger it's miss ginger hi miss ginger how are you i am doing fabulous gentlemen how are you guys we're doing good how come she can say ginger but i can't tech what's going on uh, well. <laughs> excuse me sir ginger is my god-given name she is she's a god-fearing mm. woman i think it's apparently. your parents given name I but say, i get it yeah isn't it the parents no. given not, not not god 